Humanity has taken to the stars, but not everything everywhere is for us. Those words ring true as I began my journey through a 50s inspired adventure across a strange and hostile planet. My name is Kodiak, this is Legacy Gaming, and today I'm sharing my brutally honest review of The Invincible. A huge thank you to 11-Bit Studios for providing Legacy Gaming with an early access review copy of The Invincible. Every year I try and spend some time playing games off the beaten path. AAA juggernauts are, for the most part, predictable, and if you want to have a truly unique experience, you branch out and explore games you otherwise wouldn't. That's how games like Dave the Diver, Dredge, and heck, even the first game I covered here on the channel, Dead Cells, gets discovered by the masses. With that context in mind, I've been keeping a close eye on Star Wars Industries' first game, The Invincible, which is an adaptation of a book by the same name, published in 1964. It also happens to be one of my low-key favorite genres of games, a walking simulator. And if you've never heard that term before, I believe you. To put it simply, a walking simulator is a single-player, story-driven game that focuses on narrative, environmental storytelling, and deductive reasoning to guide the player through a very linear adventure. There's little, if any, combat, and the game's fun factor comes by telling an engaging story that sucks you into the world you're inhabiting. Games like Gone Home and my personal favorite, Firewatch, have helped elevate the genre to the mainstream, but by and large, it's still very niche. I'm giving you this extra background before we dive in, realizing that not everyone knows this genre the same way they understand a first-person shooter, and if you can't understand something, you can't appreciate it, so hopefully the context helps. With that in mind, however, let's get to the matter at hand. Here's the headline. The Invincible is a solid attempt at a deep sci-fi walking sim. The voice acting is stellar, and the story does hit on an emotional level multiple times throughout the journey, but unless you're a starry-eyed fan of space and the secrets of the universe, it might not hold your attention. I wanted to love The Invincible, I really did, and as I've already confessed, I'm a huge fan of this story-driven genre. But at the end of the day, unless you're a huge fan of hardcore science fiction, it's very possible the game could lose your attention. To be fair, that's a me thing, and if you are a fan of science fiction, then The Invincible could very well be a game you enjoy. But on multiple occasions throughout my playthrough, I just fell out of the immersion, and I'm going to try and explain why that is. But first, I do want to highlight some of the good things about the game. First and foremost, the world of Regis 3, the planet you're exploring, is rather breathtaking, and it did pull me in almost immediately. It's desolate, so don't expect vibrant colors and gorgeous vistas, but as a scientist stranded on an alien planet, it did its job. Throughout almost every step of my adventure, I felt small, as if I was trespassing on someone else's home, and I think that's the exact vibe the developers were going for. Couple that with the 50s era atom punk technology that you'll encounter, and all the pieces of the world come together in a rather cohesive way. Of course, I can't go too deep into the things you see and do, because with a game like this, every scrap of information informs the bigger picture, and I don't want to spoil that for you if you're planning on playing this game. So, we'll keep things generalized so as to not ruin that element of discovery. As is common with this genre, you're often alone, and in the case of The Invincible, you're in constant contact with your commander via a radio. This is where the voice acting becomes such an imperative, part of the experience, because one bad line of dialogue, one ill-performed delivery, and it can completely pull you out of the element. In this, The Invincible gets it right, and the constant back and forth between Yasna and her commander are masterfully written and delivered. Just take a listen to a small snippet of what I'm talking about. It better be that way. We have the right to come home at last. I'm afraid I'm unfamiliar with such a law, but there is one thing I can refer to when we find ourselves in a difficult situation. If the continuation of the mission endangers the lives of the crew, the provisions of the Imprimis Homini law apply. First and foremost, the safety of people is what matters. It's that level of back and forth intermixed with your ability to choose specific and often distinctly different responses that give Yasna a unique identity. Your responses to a situation might be different than mine, and the game does react to those situations all the way up until the very end of the game. It's cool to have that layer of choice in a walking simulator because oftentimes you're stuck entirely on rails. Those deviations are purposeful, and to see the developers follow through with your response with a variable outcome, it's really cool. 
That being said, after I finished the roughly six hour game, and yes, I am well aware that's going to shock a lot of you, I realized that I could go back and play through it again with different choices. The sad reality is, I just didn't want to. Again, this is most likely because I was never truly hooked on the hardcore science fiction of the game, but if you're someone that enjoys H.G. Wells or Jules Verne, then again, it's very possible you could get sucked into the story that unfolds in The Invincible. One thing I really enjoyed was the 50s inspired aesthetic, and I was actually surprised at how much I liked it. Dubbed Adam Punk, the technology of the game was futuristic, yet shockingly primitive at the same time. The developers managed to carry that theme throughout almost every piece of technology. Whether you carried it around with you or explored it as part of the world, there was a cohesiveness that helped ground the experience in a place and time, which I loved. That theme of space and technology really culminates at the end of the adventure, and while I of course won't spoil that for you, I was genuinely shocked by the scale at which the developers presented one of the final set pieces. It honestly took me by surprise. Ultimately though, the experience of The Invincible boils down to the story and how each piece of that is laid out to the player. And that's really what I want to focus on in this last leg of the review. The story of The Invincible, like other walking simulators, is really pieced together one beat at a time, and it's that slow build that you hope leads to a climactic conclusion. Usually the mysteries that you're trying to solve involve a complex web of people and individual ambitions, but this is where the hardcore science elements of The Invincible will either win you over or lose you. From the beginning of your adventure, you're in a race to find some trace of life on the planet, again, Regis 3. But every step of the way, you're confronted with scientific analysis of the situation. Not only is it a story to uncover what happened to your crew, but it's also an exploration of the planet itself. And with each journal entry or probe record you uncover, you learn more about the planet than the human story that's underlying the entire plot. This is honestly where the game lost me. I was and am much more interested in the human element of exploration than I am with the biological makeup of a strange alien planet. And I felt like the game constantly struggled with that balance. On one front, you learn more about your crew and what happened to them and the struggle between the Commonwealth and the Alliance, different factions. On the other hand, you're trying to make sense of a strange planet and that often takes precedent over the human side of the story. This inherently isn't bad, but it all comes down to what you find interesting in your games. It's two sides of the same coin, and while each part of that adventure is interconnected, it wasn't clear what exactly I should care about at any given time. When I did eventually arrive at the finale, it just didn't hit quite as hard because both threads of the main story didn't feel fully developed, and that left me with a slightly hollow feeling as the credits rolled. Bottom line, I wish the developers had picked a lane to more clearly explore, and while there was enough exposition on both fronts, science and human interest, it needed more to truly hook me. I'm sure it's clear by now that I'm a bit conflicted on The Invincible, and that's not often a position I find myself in when reviewing a game, but this genre is notoriously tricky to evaluate because it's so subjective. You're not analyzing game systems the way you would with an RPG or FPS, so you have to dissect the nuance of story and immersion that define what these games are. Unlike some walking simulators, The Invincible doesn't lean into puzzles to try and augment the gameplay experience. There are some small moments of interaction where you flip a switch or turn a knob, but it's clear the developers are wholly focused on you, the player, having an immersive experience with the aim of not bogging you down in any one spot with an overly complex brain teaser. I will admit, I think the game could have used a bit more of this. The 50s inspired tech and the threat of a hostile and alien world certainly feel like the perfect backdrop for systems like that, and it felt like a bit of a miss to not include more interaction, even if it wasn't at the level of a full tilt puzzle. Alas, the story is king here, that's just what it is. That being said, The Invincible is interesting, and for the small cross-section of players that enjoy walking simulators and hardcore science fiction, I think you're going to find this game pretty enjoyable. It's a nerdy jaunt through the minds of science fiction writers of a bygone era, and the game developers did a marvelous job bringing those things to life. If sci-fi isn't your genre of choice, the game is still enjoyable from a story perspective, but less gripping than some of the best the genre has to offer. That may be my personal opinion, but hey, that's why you're watching our review. Technically, the game performs fine, and while the movement can feel a bit slow and tedious at times, that doesn't really get in the way of the actual experience. 
Again, it's not about systems, it's about story. And while I think the team did a good job of telling a compelling space mystery, it's not perfect, and it didn't completely win me over. I think by now you have all the information you need to properly evaluate and decide if you want to pick up the game. It's not a question of good or bad, it's more along the lines of, is this the right type of game for you? For 30 bucks, it's an easy yes for me, even if the game is relatively short. As a channel, we want to support indie developers trying new things, and Star Wars Industries has proven here that they're willing to go out on a limb and do something different in the space, and that's something we support. However, whether or not you choose to get the Invincible, it's entirely up to you. So there you have it, my brutally honest review of The Invincible. If you're a sci-fi fanatic, I think you'll see the value in spending a few bucks, but if you're not sold on the genre or the concept, maybe it's best you wait for a sale. The game is good. I don't want to take that away from the devs that clearly worked hard on the title, but it's definitely not going to be for everyone. With that in mind, The Invincible is available starting November 6, 2023, and you can pick it up for the Xbox Series X or S, PlayStation 5, and PC via Steam. As always, if you want more reviews that shoot straight from the hip than you already know what to do, hit that thumbs up and consider subscribing. Of course, you can also join us on Discord if you want to hang out with the team, talk about great games, and enter for your chance to win tons of free giveaways going on all the time. That link, as always, is below. My name is Kodiak, and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching, and play on. <laughs>